Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're gonna be working on this interesting calculus question from 2024, Korean SAT math. So based on the description of the question, we have f of x, that is cubic function, and its leading coefficient is equal to positive one, and there's no integer k satisfying f of k minus one times f of k plus one is less than zero. Okay, then the question said derivative of f of negative one over four is negative one over four. And derivative of f of 1 over 4 is a negative number. Okay, then what should be the value of f of 8? So, first of all, question said your f of x is a cubic function with a leading coefficient is positive 1. So that's why your f of x should be looking just like this. Okay, then at the same time, this condition. Derivative of f of negative 1 over 4 is equal to negative 1 over 4, which is the negative value. And then derivative of f of positive 1 over 4 is also negative value. That means both of these two values, when x is equal to negative 1 over 4 and x is equal to 1 over 4, your f of x should decrease. So that is why the only part that is decreasing from your graph is now okay, this interval. So that's why we already know negative 1 over 4 and positive 1 over 4 should be between this interval. Okay, then the next thing is we do not have an integer k that satisfies this, which means f of k minus 1 times f of k plus 1 should then be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, this is your basic setup to solve this question. Okay, so maybe based on this setup, then we can think about three cases, right? Case number one is, since we already know both negative 1 over 4 and positive 1 over 4 should be on this interval. That means you're 0. 0 has to be between negative 1 over 4 and positive 1 over 4, which has to be in the middle. Then at the same time, this k minus 1 and k plus 1, they are 2 apart. So the first case we can think about is, your 0 is an inflection point, right? Okay, so case number one is like this. Case number one is if we have zero as an inflection point. So we can maybe draw this horizontal line, and then you have the zero. And then we already know the shape of your f of x. So that's why the first case has to be if your f of x has a zero at an inflection point, just like this. In this case, negative one and positive one should be located my here. Because we already know your negative 1 over 4 and positive 1 over 4 should be in this interval. Negative 1 over 4 and positive 1 over 4 should be in this interval. So that's why negative 1 and positive 1 should be outside of this, right? So this may be the first case we can think about. But in this case, now we need to keep remembering that there's no integer k that satisfies f of k minus 1 times f of k plus 1. In this case, if you hypothetically plug it in, 1 and negative 1, right? When x is equal to negative 1, then the y value is now negative value. When x is equal to positive 1, y value is positive. Okay. Then at the same time, negative 1 and positive 1 are two of parts. In this case, this f of k minus 1 times f of k plus 1 is now less than 0. So that satisfies this. So that's why this is not the case that we need to look for, because question already said there's no integer k that's satisfying this inequality. So that's why this first case is not the case that we need to look for. Then we need to move on to two cases and analyze those two other cases. Okay, for the other two cases, one of them is to have 0 and positive 1 as the root, and the other root is negative number, but that is slightly greater than negative 1. And then the other case is to have negative 1 and 0 as the roots, and the other root is positive, but slightly less than positive 1. So case number 2. Case number two, you have the graph looking just like this. And like I said, we will have now zero and positive one as the root, and then the other root is slightly greater than negative one. So let me call this root as just the a. Okay, then the next case, case number three. So your graph looking like this, and this graph you should have negative one and zero as the root, and then the other root is positive, but slightly less than positive 1. So that's why now the other root, other positive root, let me call this as just a b. Using this, let's make an expression for your f of x for case number 2 and 3. 
Case number two, your f of x should be now equal to, since your leading coefficient is positive 1. Okay, so we have now that x times x minus 1 times x minus a. Case number three, your f of x should be now then x times x plus 1 times now x minus b. Okay, this is an expression. So let's distribute and expand those expressions. So case number two, your f of x has to be now x squared minus x times x minus a. So that's why if you distribute this, then it has to be x now cubed minus a x squared minus a. So minus x squared, and then plus ax. So that's why if you, if you combine these two terms in the middle, we have x cubed minus, now parenthesis, a plus 1 x squared plus ax. Okay, this is what we have. Let me do the same thing for case number 3. Let me expand this. So now you will have now then x squared plus x times x minus b. That is the same thing as x cubed minus b, x squared plus x squared minus bx. Combining the last, combining the middle two terms, this is the same thing as now x cubed minus parenthesis b minus 1x squared minus bx. Okay, this is an expression. All we need to do is using these two expressions for the f of x, this one should make sense. And derivative of f of negative 1 over 4 is negative 1 over 4. Using this, we already have the sign of a and b, right? a has to be anyway some negative number that is slightly greater than negative 1. b has to be anyway some positive number that is slightly less than positive 1. So it should make sense. So we can get the value of maybe a or b. Only one of these two should make sense. So let's check. Okay, for these two cases, let me get your derivative of the f of x, right? So for case number two, your derivative of f of x. Okay, that is now three. X squared, now minus two parentheses, a plus one, x plus a. And derivative for derivative of f of x for case number three. That is now equal to three. X squared minus two parentheses, b minus one, x, and then minus b. Okay. Okay, then let me plug it in this negative 1 over 4 to the x of f prime x, starting from case number 2. So case number 2, now, f prime of negative 1 over 4. Let's calculate this. We have now then uh, 3 over 16. The negative 2 times negative 1 over 4, that is positive 1 over 2, uh, parenthesis a plus 1 plus a. Okay. If you calculate this, then we have 3 over 16 plus 1 over 2a plus 1 over 2 plus a. Okay, that has to be the same thing as now. Um, 3 over 2a. And then 3 over 16 plus 1 over 2. That is now equal to 11 over 16. This needs to be equal to negative 1 over 4. So that's why 3 over 2 times a is now equal to negative 1 over 4 minus 11 over 16. That is now equal to negative 15 over 16. So that's why the value of the a in this case. a is equal to negative 15 over 16 times reciprocal of 3 over 2, that is 2 over 3. So it is negative 5 over 8. Okay, so a turns out to be negative 5 over 8. Negative number, and then slightly greater than negative 1. So we got the right number. But just wanted to make sure, 3, if you plug it in negative 1 over 4 to the x of f prime x in case number 3, it should not be working. Let's check. Now case number 3. f prime of negative 1 over 4. Let's make a calculation. Okay, so it's going to be the same, right? It's going to be the same 3 over 16. And then we have negative 1 over 2 times negative 1 over 4. That is positive 1 over 2. Parenthesis b minus 1 minus b. It's the same thing as 3 over 16 plus 1 over 2b minus 1 over 2 plus b minus b. So now if you combine this, then we have um, negative 1 over 2b. And then we have 3 over 16 minus 1 over 2. That is negative 5 over 16. This needs to be equal to negative 1 over 4. 
Okay, so that is why negative 1 over 2b is equal to negative 1 over 4 plus 5 over 16. That is going to be negative 4 over 16 plus 5 over 16. That is 1 over 16. Okay, that is why your b turns out to be negative 1 over 8. We already specified b has to be the positive value. That is slightly less than positive 1. And then your calculation turns out to be now b is negative 1 over 8. So that's why this is not the one that we need to consider. So case number 3 is not the case we need to consider. We need to stick to case number 2. Okay, now we found out about the right value of the 8. That is negative 5 over 8. And then your b didn't work. So only case number 2 did work. So that's why we just need to plug it in, negative 5 over 8, to the A. So your real f of x is now going to be equal to. Okay, f of x is equal to now x times x minus 1 times now x. And then A was negative 5 over 8, so plus 5 over 8. What are we looking for? We are looking for the value of f of 8. So if you calculate this, then it has to be now 8 times 7, times now 8, plus 5 over 8. Okay. What is 8 plus 5 over 8? 8 was 64 <clears throat> over 8. So that's why you're now working on now 8 times 7 times, and then if you combine these two, that is now 69 over 8, times 69 over 8. So cancel those two 8s out. So the answer is only 7 times 69, right? So the answer is only for 7 times 69, so that is now 483. That is the answer for this question. Okay, so pretty interesting calculus question from 2024, Korean SAT math. So I'll be back with more videos for more questions like this sometime soon.